guys. Um, so, I'm in Linear Control Systems right now, and my name's Kelsey Cameron. I decided that because I couldn't find enough online resources for how to sketch Bodhi diagrams, that I would do my own research and figure out how to do it and then make a video about it so future students will have less struggles than I did. Um, I'm going to start by doing problem number three, and then maybe I'll go to one. I might make number one in a separate video. But three is going to be a good example to explain the concepts of Bode diagrams. And I'm going to sketch both the Bode diagram for magnitude and the Bode diagram for phase. So first, when you see this, you have to factor out the constant. And you're probably wondering, what constant? I don't really see a constant. Well, we know that with Bode diagrams, we want to get it into this form. We either want s over omega to the n power or s over omega plus 1 to the n power. What is this? This could be plus or minus 1. That doesn't affect the magnitude at all. Um, so the only difference between these two types of equations is one of them is just a straight line, and the other one of them is going to keep going straight in, or continuing on its path until it gets to a certain point, and this point is actually at omega. That's the only difference between these two, and I'll explain this more as I go. So first I want to factor out the constant. When I factor out the constant, I take the 2 out, and I get 2 parentheses s over 2 minus 1 divided by s squared. That's closer to the form that we want, but not quite. Since there's an s squared in the denominator, I can bring it to the top by making it negative. When I do that, I get 2s to the negative 2 times s over 2 minus 1. This is the form that I need in order to graph the Bode diagram. So what I need to do is draw my axis. So this is my axis here. I'm going to draw this in increments of um, 20 on the left here because this axis is in decibels. You're probably like, what's a decibel? I've never heard of that. Well, it means 20 log of a number. The reason that this is used is to express larger ranges of numbers uh, within a graph. Because if you had like a million in the same graph as 0.1, it would probably be really hard to draw out and express. But using decibels, that solves this problem because you can take the log of it. So I'm going to draw my axis now, and I'm going to say this would be 0.2, and this is going to be 2, this is going to be 20, and this is going to be 200. This is also based on a log. As you can see, this multiplies by 10 each increment, so I can express it like that. So looking at this, what's my omega in this problem? Do you know? In this problem, omega is going to be 1, because you can factor the 2 out, so that's 2 times s over 1 to the negative 2, times s over 2 to minus 1 to the first, like that. What does this mean? Well, this means this number is where the slope is going to change. And this number is going to tell you the magnitude of that slope. So because this has no 1 associated with it, we know that's our starting point. If there were a 1 associated with it, we'd have to keep going straight from 0 and keep, keep going. Um, but since there's not, it's just going to be a line. How is that line going to look? What's the slope of that line? Well, it's all based on this number right here. This number right here is going to tell us the slope. So that's negative 2. And we have to multiply that by 20 in order to figure out what our slope is. So negative 2 times 20 is negative 40. That means this line is going to uh, have a slope of negative 40 until it reaches the value of 1. So I should probably add a 1 in here somewhere. I'll put the 1 right there. It's like right about there. So based on this problem, I can start to draw my line with a slope of negative 40. It's going to be a rough sketch because I don't, I'm not using MATLAB or anything like that, but it's still going to help me know where to go in this problem. Um, actually, I made, a, I made a mistake here. Just realized something. So when this 2, I should have just left it alone. Um, this 2 right here. I should have kept it connected to this, and then when I factor out, 
um, when I make the power negative and I factor it out of this whole thing, this is actually going to be a square root of 2 right here. S over square root of 2 to the second power because that's what that's what we're going to use for our constant in this. Because we have 2s squared, and basically you flip that, um, and you get that it's... You get that it's s divided by the square root of 2 to the negative 2. Why does this work? You're probably like, what did, what did you just do? Well, I'll, show, I'll prove to you real quick why that works. If we have s over square root of 2 to the negative 2, then... I know that that is going to have to be the same as this multiplied by itself twice, which is going to be s squared, and what's square root of 2 squared? Well, it's just 2. So that's going to be s squared over 2 to the negative 1, which is just 2 over s squared, which is what we already had here. So it's the factoring at the constant, like I mentioned. So our omega for this part of the problem is going to be square root of 2. Well, I pre-calculated the square root of 2. I'll tell you, it's like 1.14, 1, 1 no, 1.41, whoops. Yeah, it's 1.41, more or less. Stick with me here. And I'm going to change my axis to show where that, that value is. Um, and say that square root of 2 happens right about here. This is square root of 2. Before 2, which makes sense because it's about 1.4. So, anyway, like I was saying... I know that this is my line. Since there's no 1 associated with it, this has to be a line and it's not going to have any flat part starting out. Um, and that means I have to keep drawing the line until I get to this value. Then the magnitude stops, basically. So that means I can start at square root of 2 on my point, and like I mentioned before, I have a slope of negative 40, because negative 2 times 20 is negative 40. So I can draw this line, negative 40, and it's going to be a rough sketch, like I said. It's going to be something like, it's supposed to have a further slope. Sorry for the rough sketch. It's a little hard to do this while holding a camera. I'm going to just say that since this is, let's say this is uh, 1 right here, and that's 1.4. From here to here would be a slope of 40, negative 40. So I'm going to scoot that over, and it's actually going to be slightly above this. So I'm going to keep on drawing this line through the point, and then once I get to 2, I'm going to stop, and I'll, I'll explain why in a minute. So I, hopefully this makes sense. This line that I just drew makes sense. This line has a slope of negative 40 decibels per decade. This negative 40 came from negative 2 times 20 is negative 40. And I started here because this is this is my um, square root of 2 is my beginning value. It has to pass through that point and it has a slope of negative 40, which happens to be at this, this general area. Um, and then we're going to look at this part. So if we look at this part, what does this mean? Well, the power of 1 means that I want to increase the slope by 20 because of 1 times 20. 1 times 20 is 20. Basically, the thing that took me so long to understand about Bode diagrams is it's not so much concerned with the value of the slope, but rather the change in slope. The slope changes based on previous slopes. Once you understand this concept, everything else becomes easy. Because you look at this and you say, okay, that means the 1 is going to give me an increase of 20. If I already have, if I already have um, a decrease of 40 and an increase of 20, what do you guys think the slope is going to be of this remaining line? Well, it's going to be negative 20. Because you have negative 40, the current slope that you're at, plus 20 equals negative 20. If that doesn't make sense, um, maybe rewatch uh, part of the video that I just explained. Hopefully you're understanding that. So that means starting at this omega value right here, starting at 2, which is right there, starting at 2, increase the slope by 20. So I had a slope of negative 40 before. If I were to continue this, this would be a dashed line. 
This isn't actually part of my Bode diagram, but it's just a rough line so you can see where it would be. If I increase the slope by 20, where is it going to end up? Well, it's going to be something like this. And remember, this is per decade. So I'm going from 2 until 20, just like I went from, um, from 0 until square root of 2. So I'm going to start from 2 and continue until I get to 20. 20 is going to be this dashed line right there. Uh, hopefully you can see that. I don't know if the camera is close enough for that. Can you see it? Okay, cool. I think you can see it. So then I, like I said, this is a slope of negative 20. And I can continue this down, but stop once I get to 20. Because remember, this is only decibels per 